Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. Now, in this next video, what I want to do is show you one of Dremio's most unique and powerful features, in enabling not only the ability to access all your data in one place here in Dremio, but doing it at the top level of performance. Okay, Dremio's engine out of the box is really fast, mainly because of its Apache Arrow processing and several different other optimization techniques that are built into the engine itself, which basically makes it competitive with pretty much any data warehouse platform you could think of uh, for doing these types of workloads. But you get the added benefit of being able to work with all your data wherever it is. But there are going to be times where you're building things like BI dashboards where you still need a little bit of additional performance. And typically, in other platforms, you'd use features like materialized views or cubes. Now, Dremio has a feature that makes that takes this paradigm and takes it sort of to the next level. It's referred to as data reflections, and it's really the most unique aspect of Dremio. Um, now, let's kind of demonstrate this. So if we add another source, there's a source called sample source that's here in Dremio, that, where Dremio provides you some sample data to play with. And there's one really large data set in here, okay, that, again, for my laptop, so right now we're running with the compute power of my personal laptop because we're running this locally. In production, you'd be running a cluster of computers that are, that are much more powerful than my laptop, uh, being able to process very large data sets at scale um, at the best price performance of pretty much any tool uh, of this type. But we're gonna talk about this New York City taxi trips data, okay? So this is right now, you see it's just a folder with files and metadata because it's an iceberg table sitting on my storage. Now I can turn this iceberg table into, to be recognized as an iceberg table by, cl again, clicking that format folder. So see, it recognizes that it's iceberg. And right now it's gonna read the schema. Again, this is a very large data set. We're talking about like 300 million records. So it, it may take a little bit for my laptop to get all that, but see, I got that pretty quickly. Okay, but we're gonna run, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a query that may take a sec, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something like um, pick up date time, passenger count. So what we're gonna do is I want to get the average, um, let's say the average fare amount and tip amount by depending on the number of passengers on, in the ride. So what I'm gonna do is say, hey, I want passenger count And then I want the average fare amount. And so you get like auto complete, which makes typing all this out a lot easier. Okay. And I want the average tip amount. Okay. And then I want to group by um, group by passenger count. Okay. And actually, even before we run this query, what I'm going to do is you can actually run multiple queries in the same session. So you can see how I can do that here. So I'm going to say select count. So I just want the count of records from uh, I'll just copy that name over here. There we go. So that way you can see that this, this, this particular data set has a lot of records before it runs this query, which again, on my laptop, uh, with, with sort of limited resources as I'm running Postgres and Nessie and Spark, all currently on my laptop, um, will take a minute or two. Okay, which is still pretty fast considering the large, the size of the data set. Okay, so I'm gonna hit run on this. So first it's gonna start doing the count and give me, getting me a count of the records, which should take about 12 seconds uh, on my laptop. So we'll give that a moment to complete that. Yep, okay. And then, so now we have the count, which is what you can see right here. So we're looking at 338 million records. Okay, so that's a lot of records that it's processing. So now if we go back over here, oh, that looks like it went away. But now that I have that counted, I can run my group by query, which disappeared. But I will just group by. Okay, so now I'm gonna run this query. And then again, this should take a few minutes to run. 
uh, considering we're processing uh, all these averages across uh, over 300 million records right here with the power of my laptop. So I'll let it do that and we'll be right back. And then after that, I will show you how we can use reflections to actually make this same query happen again at less than a second. And there it is. You see that it took about two minutes and 40 seconds to complete this query across over 300 million records, which again, all things considered is really fast uh, considering the power of my laptop. Okay, and that's again, retrieving that data from a remote server somewhere as well. So probably most of the time was really uh, possibly data retrieval depending on my internet connection. So that's completed, but let's see if we can accelerate that. So one way you can do this is through a feature called reflections. Okay, so what I can do is if I go back to my data explorer and I'm gonna go back to that data set, the New York City taxi trips, I can go here to where it says go to table. This will take me to a view where I can see these other pieces. So details is actually a cool place where you have a wiki so you can actually do documentation for all your data sets uh, to make it easier for people to understand and have context and shared knowledge and shared terminology um, within within their data sets. Also, you're able to tag data sets. So I'll, I'll just actually tag this real quick. Taxi. And then I'll show you how we can use that to make searching for the data much easier as well. But more importantly, I want to show you is reflections. Now, reflections are two types, raw reflections, which are going to be used in the same kind of use cases you would use materialized views, and aggregate reflections, which are going to be used in similar types of use cases as you would use cubes for accelerating uh, BI or group by type uh, queries. So for our purposes, we need aggregate reflections. But just so you're aware, raw reflections allow you to create sort of a, a copy of the rows. You typically would do this on a view of a table so you have a particular sub view that you just want to kind of accelerate. So what you want to do is just materialize it. But when you make that materialization, you can actually choose how it's sorted, how it's partitioned to get the maximum performance for the types of queries you expect that view to get. And you can actually create multiple reflections. So I can actually create multiple reflections with different sorting rules and partitions. And then Dremio, what it'll do is, so instead of having to create multiple materialized views, each with a different name, that the analyst then has to keep track of. So saying, hey, when I do these queries, use this materialized view. When I do these queries, use this materialized view. Dremio will just be aware of these reflections. And when they query the one table, Dremio will then swap out the right reflection based on the query that came in and based on the rules of that reflection. So this makes life a lot easier for your analyst, but it also makes it a lot easier for your data engineer because crafting these reflections, as you can see, are pretty straightforward point and click operations. And then Dremio will periodically refresh that reflection, allowing it to keep consistent with the data, the underlying data, instead of the data engineering, the data engineer having to figure out exactly how we're going to keep this all in sync. Now, going back to aggregate reflections, with aggregate reflections, I can choose sort of how I want to optimize um, for uh, whatnot. So if I want to do an aggregate reflection, in this situation, we were using a the uh, passenger count as our dimension, right? So we're grouping by passenger count and we were looking at the measures for fare and tip so right now i'm going to leave it like that but you can actually specify hey which measures are you um optimizing for okay so in this case i'm going to optimize for all for both measures okay and then once we got the the uh, this all set up we just click save and that's going to begin creating uh, the reflection. Okay. Cool. Now let's take a moment. Okay. So right now it's creating the reflection. Oh, well, it's creating these raw reflections. I don't want to do that. Save. Wait, I still want to get rid of this one too. Because that would save like gigs to my computer but I do want to save this. So I'll let that do its job and you'll, you'll know it's done when this footprint shows you like the size of the reflection. Now, once a reflection is created, you'll see that, hey, there's like a size of that reflection. And you can see like 20, 21 KB in order to take, you know, a two minute query and make it sub-second, pretty nice. Okay, now let's go back and run that query again. Okay, by passenger count. And if I run it, 
it should run significantly faster because Dremio will notice that the reflection was added and swap that out. So I'll run the query again. And you see at that time it was like less than a second it took to complete that same query on those over 300 million records. Okay, from basically my laptop. Okay, that, that, that whole, whole thing was all, this has all been powered by my laptop up to this point. I don't, this is, so you can only imagine when you actually have a production cluster, the power of this. And when I take a look at the jobs panel over here, I can actually see which jobs were accelerated by reflections by this column right here. If you see the little lightning rod, that means reflections were used to, to speed up that query. And then again here in the jobs page, I can go even deeper, click on the job and I can kind of see, hey, how much time things were taken. So if I were to go back, actually take a look at the, the, the original job. So here we go, two minutes and 47 seconds. Okay, so you can kind of see uh, where the, the time was spent in crunching the numbers and things like that. So cool. That's this section about reflections. I'll see you in the next section of the demo. But the idea here is that once you can make it where you can query the data really fast, that makes it where you can now serve a BI dashboard directly off this data that's going to be super performant without having to create things like BI extracts or create external cubes. Essentially, the idea is that you accelerate it here and you can have different teams using different BI tools, the benefit of Dremio's semantic layer. Um, basically creating BI dashboards off this data, and they're all going to benefit from that same acceleration, and they're all going to be using it off the same version of the data. Um, and that's the beauty of it, the, uh, the much easier to achieve consistency and performance that you can have when you use Dremio as that sort of unification layer.